We are here because of the project of our ministry, Broadcasting Israel. Mr. Roger Hedgehog is one of the most popular radio hosts in the United States. And well, I've been here several times, but not since the 1990s. It's a wonderfully different country these days. Very innovative, very diverse, very exciting. And uh, we went down to Gaza. We saw where the conflict kind of is. But in here, in this metropolitan area and around this uh, country, we see so much incredible progress. I'm glad to say that uh, from our personal conversation right now and from, from what is uh, what I'm being told about the programs, uh, I think that Mr. Hatchcock is really exposing the real Israel to his listeners, and we're talking about millions of listeners every week. Jerusalem, of course, is a, a, a wonderful city, and I was walking through the other day the city of David along the Western Wall and the new tunnels that have been, the excavations that have gone on there, the discoveries that have gone on there where the archaeologists are describing layer upon layer of civilization. I told him I'm from San Diego. We live in the first layer of civilization, barely. I mean, you know, there's nothing underneath us. So this is quite a different and unusual experience. Very interesting. Abraham was in Beersheba. It was along this road, literally, that he took Isaac and walked up to Jerusalem. This is like the road of all roads, the beginning of the nation of Israel, the beginning of Abraham and Isaac and the dynasty of the nation of Israel. And as we walk here, we see remnants of the second temple period. So back from biblical times to modern times, the Jewish people have returned to our homeland. If we don't have a right to walk where Abraham and Isaac walked, why do we have a right to walk in Tel Aviv? If we give up our claim to this land, we've given up our claim to the entire land. And so we're here and we're here to stay because it's a just cause because it's true, because we've only had one land, and this is the land that we belong to. Out of this remote area, obviously the settlers have built beautiful farms and homes and communities where nothing was here before. And you can see the vines, the wineries, the trees, the olives. It's been, uh, it's been transformed, and to the better. And it's a remarkable thing to see, and, 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 and like all of Israel, as I stand here looking at what has been done in modern times, the last few years, I see the things that are still here, the evidence of ancient times as well. It's very, very impacting. Americans want everything to happen yesterday. You know, we're very impatient <laughs> and very naive. And we look at these two irreconcilable visions and say, you know, somehow you're going to have to work this out. Somehow, with it looks like the, the Arabs, the Muslims in the area, determined to kill every Jew, the Jews, with their villages ringed by barbed wire trying to protect themselves. This is a situation that, you know, in past times has been dealt with just by, unfortunately, war and a lot of death. Now, can you, short of that, solve the problem? I think it's going to be up to you. Critics of Israel in my country often complain that the media is owned by the Jews. This clearly cannot be the case because the case for Israel is never presented, I don't think, very honestly in the worldwide media, in the American media. For whatever reason, um, the story of places like this, of the progress you and the communities you've built out of this land, never gets told. And the violence against you by the surrounding and intermingling Arabs never gets told. In fact, the recent slaughter of the family in Toulouse, France, took days for them to admit it even was a Muslim who did it. First it was just some kind of renegade or some, some you know, they try to cover up the story. So I think, I think that people here have got to start reaching out and telling their story. Unfortunately, what is being known around the world about this country is that there's a fight going on, a conflict. Everything is very militant here. But the truth is, the way we know it, very different. And uh, I think that uh, without avoiding covering the conflict, the programs of uh, uh, Mr. Hashok are about all kinds of things happening in this country. And uh, objectively speaking, 70 or 80 percent of our life is devoted to development, culture, industry, social issues, and not about fighting. And that's, that's exactly what we are trying to expose to the rest of the world.